Hello everyone and welcome back to game 2 of Seth vs Risky. Following in suite with the game replays tourney, this is round 3 game 2 featuring both players. So continuing on from their first game, the winner of that match was Seth. So now both opponents have uh, switched around factions, still playing on Semwa. Seth is playing as the PE this time as part of the Axes, whilst Risky is playing as the Americans. So it is good to have Ryan back with us, and Ryan, I believe, is going to be focusing on the Americans, correct? That's correct. Ryan knows what he's doing, and I know what I'm doing. I'm focusing on Seth. So we will get this game going in five Four, three, two, and one. Okay, so Ryan, um, we just had a game where uh, Risky was actually quite a... He seemed to be quite a decent Vermont player. Like, he definitely had his um, games down and his strategies down in stone. He definitely knew what he was doing. Do you believe that he might have the same sort of comprehensive ability with his Americans? Oh, I don't... I, just a I prediction. <laughs> Uh, just a just a prediction. Uh, you know, my, uh, with Risky in general, he's been around for quite a long time as well, and um, he uh, he definitely is a a great player in this matchup. Sefa really just had a a great counter organized for his five pio tier two. He definitely did, and that was last game. So if you guys haven't watched it, definitely check it out because this is round two. You don't want us, you do not want to spoil it. So, uh, Seth has got his Panzer Grenadiers going out from his base, and funnily enough, he's not actually capping away at the strategic point. So what he is doing, he's actually rushing for another point. Um, he has a Panzer Grenadier squad just trailing behind there, so we will have to see what they're going to be doing. Perhaps something uh, different in terms of their capping order, but we will definitely have to see. I actually see. don't know that that squad will cap at all. I think it may actually run towards the uh, southeast munitions and try and cut off the engineers, although it looks like he's going for this fuel point. Um, I don't doubt that he will actually try to uh, chase those engineers off and reduce the American capping power. Could be doing that, but this is just in order to save the time. So that's why he had the initial Panzer Grenadier squad with the G, the Guerra, uh, Guerra 43 going for that fuel point, just so he could save some time and connect the uh, the cutoff point with the other Panzer Grenadier squad. So now the other Panzer Grenadier squad looks like it's going to be joining up with the Pan the uh, Guerra 43 squad and possibly moving down south to meet those engineers. Part of your prediction, and yes, it does look like they're just about to do so. Uh, the Kentcrad, whilst that is all going on, is on the center side of the map, just going to be capping away, focusing on the munitions. Yeah, and we're seeing uh, 3PG to Tier 2. Um, that's a fairly early Tier 2 start, um, but it, you know, because we're used to 2.601 kind of giving birth to a lot of heavier um, Panzer Grenadier play. And so uh, you see Risky down here kind of stalling these Panzer Grenadiers using the building and the hedge down the way lower right hand corner of the map. <laughs> Whatever uh, seconds he can save, I suppose. Um, you know, I suppose that's pretty cool. But the Panzer Grenadier squad has managed to chase them away, and they're actually not even going to bother trying to recap that um, that munitions point. They're actually just going to completely avoid it because they're obviously going to be quite slow. They have to first decap it, then cap it for themselves. So they're just probably going to leave that for the Kettenkrad, which is actually capping the munitions high munitions point without anything connected to it. So they're probably going to connect this uh, connect it with the strategic point eventually. However, it doesn't look like they're going to be doing that. But the uh, infantry half track is coming out of the Kampfgruppe company, and that's going to be kind of an interesting sort of thing. So obviously you're going to have quite a bit of suppressive ability by having such a vehicle out on the field. Yeah, its suppression is not fantastic. It's certainly not what it was when it almost had MG42 level suppression. Um, but it does do a good job, particularly against units in open cover. 
And of course he can uh, reinforce nearby, but what do you think is the reasoning behind going for a T2 strat? What do you think he might go for next? Uh, well, I, I think what he's doing is he's establishing center control on the map and having an infantry half-track that you can reinforce from with the strength of Panzer Grenadiers um, and the G43s that's going to help you really establish a foothold in the center of the map. And at this point, he's just trying to chase these rifles off. Yes, he's getting delayed a little bit. Um, but having said that, I, I think that's really what he's focused on. He's moving back into the center again. One of the things that I hate about playing um, Panzer Elite on Semwa is getting that fuel cut off because it feels like there are points in the way that your Panzer Grenadiers come out where by the time the rifle squad is out, it's moved across the map a little bit, capped up a couple of strat points, it can walk on that fuel point, and it feels like there's very little in the way that you can actually do about it. I mean, all you can do about it is uh, divert that Kettenkrat to recapping it, and that is what he's actually doing. He's not even bothering to take the munitions point uh, near his base. Instead, he's going right for the fuel because it's going to be very important for uh, teching up. So the infantry half-track just going down the road, actually just dodging a American mine. The mine is just a bit placed awkwardly. If it was a bit to the um, left, it could actually have gotten the infantry half-track there, and that would have been quite a setback for Seth. However, instead, he he has managed to got managed to have two infantry half tracks on the field, so this is going to be a very big um, push in the beginning of the game. So two infantry half tracks and those three PGs. He's moving them to combat those riflemen as best as possible. He actually managed to make one retreat, and he got the the Panzer Grenadier squads in the infantry half track and are relocating them on a fuel point. Yeah, and that's a great trick with the infantry half-track, being able to pick up a couple of PGs, take them with the infantry half-track, and, and move them, you know, to an area where you need them, and then use the infantry half-track as a reinforcement, um, some suppression, a little damage to go with it. It, it really makes a, for a very mobile kind of style of play, and in some regards, one could argue the way that, you know, the Panzer Elite were essentially designed to play it's definitely an all-rounder vehicle. It does a. Uh, it was doing quite a good job there to uh, transport the units quickly. I think that must have been um, THQ's initial idea of how the half tracks were meant to work in the game. Not only the infantry half tracks, but just the normal half tracks from, say, the Wehrmacht and from the Americans. They're probably supposed to transport the units quicker around the map, and so it's quite nice seeing Seth actually do that, taking advantage of that because most people would actually just get their guys running towards there. So Seth has actually relocated both of these infantry half tracks on the center where the bridge is, and both of these uh, infantry half tracks. Do you believe they could do a decent amount of separation or uh, suppression together? Uh, yes. Well, uh, you know, with the engineers, uh, one of the changes that they made to the engineers is they made them so they're not so instantly suppressed um, by even random small arms fire. However, their their suppression does get increased when they get the uh, flamer upgrade, and the two of these. Infantry half tracks are doing a great job because these rifles are in negative or open cover, and once you've got both of their fire focused on these squads, the, their suppression uh, counters all go up that way within a particular radius. That was a big loss for the Americans there. They lost tons of guys there. Um, just a total, total uh, devastation of their what was meant to be a counter attack, trying to get back into the game, but instead. Seth is actually putting down, what is this? A teller mine. Yeah, and believe it or not, that's uh, fairly standard for the, uh, for the, uh, kind of the tier two infantry half track stat strats is to go tank hunters and be able to drop teller mines, particularly on a map like Semwa where you've got three, uh, you only have three ways to access the center of the map. It's actually a wise de decision that he went for that because if we look at the American, he actually has that motor pull out with the M8. However, there is a engineer with um, a minesweeper on there and that's why we see the mine just revealed and the rifleman just taking some shots on it, just about to destroy it and actually losing one of their engineers just uh, being too close to that mine there. 
Well, Teller Mines have a fantastic splash radius, but um, you know that Minesweeper choice was really a good one uh, on Risky's part, being able to to you know pull that Minesweeper out and go. You know what? I'm not going to risk a Teller Mine out there. However, he does have a Shrek squad in the building here, and Shreks were buffed against M8s as far as their accuracy goes. So the M8's still going to have kind of a difficult time. That is, if the Panzer Shreks can actually hit it. They're um, staying in the building, of course, just because if they did come out of the building, the ch it's likely that the uh, Rifleman would focus fire on the uh, Panzer Shreks, and then they would, the pa PE would have a very hard time of actually doing anything. So that half track and is that crashing. Panzer Shrek is just failing miserably. I mean, it blew up the little propaganda post. Um, it's it's shot four or five times now. Apparently that accuracy buff on the M8 not really coming through all that well. Did you actually see that um, infantry half track crashing into the side of the building and it ripped down the entire wall? Oh yeah, it absolutely did. And <laughs> of course now with the second Shrek spot entering the field, I mean you're seeing some pretty long range shots here. And that M8 goes down. Oh no! Oh Jesus! out of control and that is a good game coming down from risky so he has another emmy out but however there's already two panzer shreks and that is just probably too much for um, him to deal with so two wins in seth's favor and th that is a loss for risky he is officially eliminated from the tournament well done seth um any impressions from that ryan Oh, I, you know, I mean, that was, I honestly have never seen two infantry half-tracks put a dent into four rifleman squads the way that those two did. And had that not have happened, um, Seth would have would have kind of been in trouble here, but honestly, they were played fantastically. I was amazed at that. <laughs> definitely so. The infantry half-tracks were the star of the show there. It's unfortunate you had to lose one of them, but then again, definitely the stars of the show. Doing lots of damage, suppressing them very well. Um, also love that use of going for the tank uh, tank destroyer doctrine and going for the teller mines, putting that down. It's kind of unfortunate that the minesweepers had to come out, but then again, very good use of knowing your opponent, what your opponent might do by Risky. Uh, it's kind of unfortunate though that he had to get pushed back so heavily by those infantry half-tracks and you know it's very unfortunate to see that. Um, if he did stay in the game longer I would like to have seen him gone on the right hand side of the map and try to fight over there rather than um, continuing to pursue the middle. Yeah, it, it's a tough road both ways, and that infantry engagement there where he lost all of those, it, that manpower in riflemen, I mean, look at the squads that are out there. He just built two M8s. I don't know what um, Risky's final fuel was, but he had just built two M8s. You gotta figure a three out of center is another 200 manpower and 20 fuel. Um, and, you know, 200 manpower when you've got. Uh, Four squads of riflemen, one with one guy, one with two guys, another one with two guys, and one with four guys. Hey, you're talking about a few minutes before you're back in the game again. That's right, definitely. So it's going to take a long time to reinforce all of that. Um, if I was just to make a future prediction of what might have happened, if he did go along the right-hand side and try to uh, fight over there, what we have to be aware of is that there's still one infantry half-track on the field and two Panzer Shrek squads. What could have possibly happened, in my opinion, is if uh, Seth actually put the Panzer Shreks inside that infantry half-track and actually went inside um, Risky's base whilst he was away fighting on the right-hand side, he could actually have very much so harassed him, but then again, that is speculation and predictions of what could have happened if this game continued on. Um, anyway, so moving on, we will be casting some more uh, round three games, so we will see you guys very soon.